and it's recording now, right? Okay. So uh, welcome to anyone that's watching to the recording. Uh, today's topic will be the very basics of trading. Um, as I told you in the Discord, we'll slowly transition from very basic topics to more advanced ones. I'm going to talk about uh, statistics and we're going to talk about modern portfolio theory. It's going to be a lot of fun stuff, a lot of complicated stuff, a lot of math uh, in some classes. So I hope you don't sleep in those because I think, especially when you're trading a lot, math is a big part of it, finding your edge and letting it play out over time, right? And understanding why we should manage risk and all of those things. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to just wait a little bit more, maybe one minute to see if anyone else arrives. If not, we start the class. Okay. Marcelo, thanks for your time, man. Thanks very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I really like doing these things, um, especially like the ones uh, about blockchain technology. The first ones were the ones that I enjoyed the most making because uh, I learned a lot making those. And I even learned a lot making even those about uh, topics that I know a lot about. Still, uh, I still find something new to learn every time that I make one of these. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm going to start now. It's five minutes past. So if anyone's late, they, they're going to miss this first part. Okay, so uh, we're talking about trading. Now, let's understand first, how does trading even work, right? So uh, how do we exchange things? Like if you're exchanging money for a coffee or something like that, it's very easy, right? You go to the to the coffee shop and you'll buy something or if you're trying to buy you know like a ps5 or a ps4 or something like that you just go to best buy or to ebay and you buy that right but if i'm trying to buy and sell cryptocurrencies really fast and without lag then i need someone to kind of find those people to me people that i can sell to and people that i can buy from right that's why we have centralized exchanges. Nowadays, we have decentralized exchanges, the DEXs. I think uh, we have even a, a meeting. It wasn't one of the first ones where we talked about liquidity pools and automated market makers. You can watch that in the website, I think. But yeah, uh, DEXs are really recent and centralized exchanges have existed for a while, right? And what they do is they connect a buyer and a seller for any determined asset that they list, okay? Now, how do they do that? How do they connect a buyer and a seller? It's very simple, actually, okay? They store the prices people want to sell in the order book. The sell orders, they are placed in the ask column. So these are the prices that people want to sell at, right? They are grouped, uh, in this case, by intervals of $10. And this represents the amount they're, they're willing to sell at each value. Okay, and the buy orders are placed in the bid column. So this left column here, and there are how much people are bidding for this asset, and this represents the quantity. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm gonna show you now uh, the order book. This is go charting. It's uh, an alternative to trading view, and I like it because it shows you. You click in this little left arrow right here, right. And you can see uh, live trades, all the trades that have happened. So this shows like market trades and everything. And it also shows the order book. Uh, I'm going to click the plus icon right here so I can see the entire order book. And you can see right here, this is the live order book for a Bitcoin on Bitstamp. Okay. So each exchange has its own order book. That's why, um, that's why sometimes, especially in the futures market, we see like huge wicks because each exchange has its own order book. And sometimes when a lot of people are liquidated, the price kind of shoots up. So for example, if I go to uh, BTC, USDT futures on Binance, you can see, you might remember this right here. Uh, this day right here, we had a huge wick upwards okay you can see it here it went to like 48k in like minutes and it went down right after that's be that's because every single exchange has its own order book so you can see for example 
in other exchanges, even Bitcoin, it did not go so high. So Bybit, for example, it did not go so high, right? There's no wick right here. Okay. Now, uh, the more orders they ha we have, the more sellers and buyers we have, the more liquidity we have. Okay. We can define the liquidity of an asset um, of a trading pair, specifically when we're talking about crypto and Forex even, uh, as the ease of buying it and selling it without having a big impact on price. Okay. So for example, right here, um, you can see like from each dollar, there's a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, kind of volume right here. So I think 13 G, 100 G, that is like millions. I don't know. I'm not sure. But yeah, you have a lot of money at each of these uh, intervals, right? But if we went, for example, to uh, let's say a, li a very low liquidity pair. So this Bitcoin pair of this kind of shit going right here, YoYo BTC. Um, now let's let the, the orders kind of refresh. It takes a little bit. I'm not sure if we will even be allowed to see it because this is such a like a low liquidity market that people don't usually you know keep those things updated and free of bugs. So we can see this is very little liquidity. There are very little people trading. The price barely even moves sometimes, right? So um, you can see right here the price is literally literally at the same price for like maybe two three days, right? It didn't even move, okay? And this is because there are not many people trying to sell, not many people trying to buy. So if I went into with like $100,000 or something like that, and I tried to buy it at market or uh, at a market price, right? And we're going to see about the types of orders. I would make the price essentially skyrocket up, okay? So um, how we can determine liquidity, good uh, indicators for that. If you go to coin market cap, um, you can see for each currency, let me see, when you click right here, so for example, Bitcoin, you can go down right here, and there are spot and perpetual and futures market. So here we have like plus 2% debt and minus 2% debt. So this would be how much money it would take to like make the price of Bitcoin on Binance uh, go down by 2%. So $23 million, right? It's a lot of money. You don't do all of that at once and for just 2%, okay? And for going up, it's $8 million something. But if we go to, for example, let's see, YoYo, I don't know if it's here. Um, let's see if the data shows up. Yeah, you can see right here, the minus 2% is like $3,000 and the plus 2% is $16,000. So if I were to, you know, say like I'm a very rich person or something like that, and I try to buy uh, all in at once, I would just take the price skyrocket up and people would sell and then it, it would go back down and I would probably lose money. Okay. Now, this is also, uh, also makes it subject to manipulation, right? Because uh, especially with those pump and dump schemes, uh, I think you all have seen one, at least one in your lifetime where people say, buy this coin, it's going to pump, it's going to pump. It's usually in Bitcoin or Ethereum pairs because people do not trade these as much, right? So the order book is very empty. Um, and yeah, a lot of people buy and it doesn't need to be a lot of money really. And the price skyrockets up, okay? And those people that are behind the scams they have bought before, but they just sell on the suckers that bought at the pump and dump scheme, okay? So it makes it more subject to manipulation. Um, one thing that's also um, common with low liquidity pairs is that the bid ask spread is larger. Okay, so if we go to the order book of Bitcoin, for example, you can see. Um, let's see, bit stamp. You can see if I decrease a lot. Like the spread between the the people trying to sell to for the lowest price and the people trying to buy for the highest price. No, I mean it's the opposite. The people trying to sell for yeah the lowest price and the people trying to buy for the yeah yeah that's it. 
sorry, I get a little bit confused with translation sometimes. It's very little, right? It's like uh, $5, something like that. Right here, you can see the spread. Uh, in less liquid markets, that might be sometimes through two, three percent. And so just by like buying it, it has to go up three, five, six, six, seven percent just for you to break even, right? Because there are not that many people trying to sell. So the distance between the sells and the buys is larger. Okay. Again, uh, these are the problems that I told you about. The order, this order book model, it needs a lot of action traders work well and to provide good liquidity, right? In DeFi, this creates a, a problem. And that's what why we have the liquidity pools. It's like an automated um, kind of market making scenario where the computer controls the sells and the buys and the price related to that, okay? Okay, now, now that we talked a little bit about liquidity, uh, do you guys have any questions about that? Was it clear? Okay, so now let's talk a bit about basic order types and market makers and market takers. I didn't put market takers right here because it would take too much space, okay? So how do we get our order in the order book? It's very simple, actually. We just submit the order to the exchange. So each exchange has its own um, interface. Let me, let me show you, for example, KuCoin right here. I created a, an account on KuCoin with, without like any money, just to show you guys. I don't use KuCoin, uh, especially because their liquidity is kind of low compared to Binance. So while Binance is working for me, I'm using Binance, okay? But you can see right here, sorry, I created my click on markets. Let's see, spot trading. Let's just wait for it to load. And then in any ex ex like regular exchange, if you see the chart, there are these three orders, right? The limit order, the market order, and the stop limit order, okay? And now let's, um, let's see how they work, okay? Uh, first things first, whenever we add our orders to the order book, so it's stored there actually, we are considered market makers, okay? And in most cases, in most exchanges, you would pay a uh, lower fee for the trade. So Binance, for example, if you don't have a lot of money on your account, you actually pay the same fee. Okay, you can see right here, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. But if you have a little bit more money, I think it's from half a BNB to one BNB staked with them, you pay a little bit of a lower fee when you're a market maker. And it goes progressively, right? You can go as low as... Um, 0.02 fees on spot trading. Um, if we use our orders to remove from the order book, we are considered the market takers because we are taking liquidity off the order book, okay? And we will usually pay higher fees like you saw right here, okay? So limit orders. These are the, the simplest orders you can submit, right? So um, when you use a buy limit, it will like trigger for any price uh, at the limit that you said, or lower, right? Okay, uh, if you use a sell limit, it can go at the price that you set or higher, okay? Now, if, if it triggers at the price that you specified, you are considered a market maker because your order was there previously, right? However, let's say the price is like right here. Can you see my mouse right here? If you place a limit order and the price is right here and you place your limit order right here, it will be triggered at the market price, okay? And you'll be considered uh, a market taker, okay? And it's the inverse for sell limits, okay? Now, stop limit orders, they work. Let's think, um, what if I wanted to place a limit order in such a way that it's not immediately triggered, right? So let's say the price is right here and I want to protect my losses from if it goes like right here, I say, well, it's going to go a lot lower. So I use a, a stop limit order. And let me just bring up the image right here. And this is the stop price. And let's say this is the sell limit price, okay? So when the price reaches this point, it will automatically create a limit order right here, okay? Um, one thing that's very important with stop limit orders is to leave a little bit of a breeding room between them. So for this, I'm gonna go to GeoGebra right here. 
just to illustrate it more clearly. Um, and let's go to geometry, very cute. So um, let me just show the, the grid. Okay. So let's say the price is doing something like this. And then it goes down a lot and very quickly. Now, if I have like my stop limit right here, like the, the stop price right here, and the price just shoots down through it because there's some delay, but I placed, let's say I placed my limit order right here. But if the price goes down too quickly, the delay between the stop uh, triggering and the limit order being created might be enough so that the price actually skips your limit order, okay? So then what happens is your stop loss has skipped. And now instead of selling right here, you sold like right here. You're still holding the coin when you're right here. Okay, and this can be very bad. This can be very disastrous. So always leave a little bit of a breathing room. It depends on each coin, how much you're gonna use of a breathing room, okay? Because one thing that we're also trying to make is to pay lower fees. And if you use a limit order too low, you're gonna pay the taker fees. So for example, let's say I use the, the limit order right here and the price only goes down to right here. I will still sell, but yeah, the stop has to be your stop loss, but I will pay um, the maker fees, right? Because it's higher than my limit price. I will sell right here, but I'll still pay the maker fees, okay? The ideal scenario would be I place the, the limit order kind of right at a price that the, the price stops. But this is kind of feasible, but it's something that we're kind of trying to do, especially if the, the difference between the maker and taker fees is big. Okay, cool. Now market orders are the simply, this is the, the simplest of every one of these. Um, they'll simply fill at the best market price available. Okay, uh, again, if you're using these in the liquid markets with a big of a big amount of money, you can run into slippage problems. If you go to a DEX, for example, you always see the slippage settings, right? On PinkySwap, on Uniswap, you can adjust your slippage. And that is how much you're willing for, for the price to go up or down, depending on if you're buying or selling uh, before your order is triggered. So if I go to an illiquid market and just pour $10,000, for example, here in YoYo, and I do it on OKX and I just sell or buy, if I buy $10,000, then the price would skyrocket up and that would not be good for me because it would be still be buying at the higher prices, right? You always pay taker fees and you're also more subject to manipulations and problems with internet delays. Maybe sometimes the price that is showing you, it's not the price that your order is going to be triggered. So if you're buying at market orders, especially with higher amounts of money, especially on lower liquid markets, pay attention, you know? Okay. Now the third, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I kind of skip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about hidden fees and commissions, okay? So some exchanges, some brokers, especially Robinhood, right? You guys live in the US um, and Robinhood, I know it's very popular and they advertise themselves as commission-free, right? You don't pay anything to trade, they say. However, uh, the, the reality is the fees are kind of priced in in the form of the spread. Now, if you guys remember, the, the spread in a given asset is the difference between the lowest price sell and the highest price buy, right? And it kind of manipulates those levels so that the difference is bigger than it actually kind of is. And so they, they kind of make the difference right there. Uh, Robinhood does this uh, and yeah, effectively it has the same effect as trading fees because uh, just to break even on your investment, it has to go up by some amount. Okay, so take care with those, um, search for a bit, especially if they're saying it's no commission, it's probably something like this, uh, the, the spread fees, okay. Uh, yeah, for stocks, it's a little bit worse, I think, to, in, in terms of commissions. In crypto, the commissions uh, are very low, especially on Binance, I think it's, you guys saw it, it's 0.1%, but in stocks, sometimes it can be up to five, maybe 7%, and that's a lot of money to pay just to trade, right? 
Now let's talk a little bit about the more advanced order types and configurations, okay? So if you're trading on Binance, especially, you might see those settings like GTC, IOC, FOK, and these are settings that allow you to customize the behavior of your order. So if I go here on KuCoin, they have um, like lower customizability, the, their order, their trading system is not as good as Binance, I think. But if you go here to settings, you might see it, uh, time in force, right? Good to canceled, good to time, immediate or cancel, and fuel or kill, okay? And what these does, is first good till cancel. Well, it's kind of obvious, right? It just works until you cancel the order. Go to time, especially on KuCoin right here. Um, you just set a time and say, well, if the order is not hit safe, uh, and I think this is the time that after you create the order, if this order doesn't get triggered in 22 hours and three minutes, then you cancel it. Now, immediate or cancel right here. Uh, the order will try to fill as soon as you place the order and the remainder, the remainder is canceled, okay? So it will fill like, let's say it fills, you want to try to buy one Bitcoin and you can only buy half a Bitcoin at the price that you put your order. The other half Bitcoin will be discarded and the order will be deleted, okay? And if okay, fill or kill, the order will either be filled completely or it will be canceled, okay? So it will only buy the whole Bitcoin. Uh, it, it will only buy if there's space space to buy the whole Bitcoin. If not, it will immediately cancel, okay? Now, uh, why should you use them? You know, it might kind of seem abstract. Uh, when you're dealing with larger capital in a market that's not so liquid as we saw, liquidity and all that, the FOK and the IOC orders might be very useful, right? Uh, depending on your strategy with the particular asset. If you're trying to pump the coin, obviously you're not using this, but um, I don't think like any of us would try to pump anything because it's not worth it, I think. Okay. Uh, the FOK will ensure and try allocation is filled at the price you desire. And the IOC will ensure that your order is not left there and the price is exit, you're kind of protected. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about OCO orders, also called one cancels the other orders. Now, uh, on many exchanges, I don't think even the, the KuCoin has it. So when you place an order, let's say I have 50 USDT, I can't place those 50 USDT on the spot markets, at least on the futures, it's a little bit different, but I can't just place that order in like uh, 10 different prices. Let's say I place, I just have 50 USDT. I say, I wanna buy uh, 50 USDT right here, 50 right here, 50 right here. I can do that. I can just place the order with the amount of capital I have once, okay? It locks up the capital I have involved in that order. So the OCO orders, they allow you to place a stop limit order and a sell limit order. So it kind of works. If you guys um, trade more often, it works to place a take profit order and a stop loss order at the same time on spot markets, okay? Uh, since the assets are kind of locked up and let's say I have multiple targets, I recommend you guys to make the maths and, uh, before, okay? So for example, let's say um, I have three targets on uh, Bitcoin and I have $100 or let's do the, so the math gets easier, one uh, Bitcoin, right? And I went to sell three different targets. So if I just go uh, with going, selecting, right? Like right here, I just select 33% and Binance, there's a slider. I'm not that used with KuCoin. So if you just go 33%, it will lock the 33%. So you're only left with 66, right? And then if you do the 33 again, then it's 33 off 66, which is actually 22 of the total, okay? So you must make the mass before. So with one Bitcoin, it's one divided by three, right? And that's the amount you're gonna manually type on each order, right? 0 0.333 repeating, okay? Yeah, you gotta make sure that you can get, uh, you know, you can make some mistakes sometimes and it's not good to make mistakes, especially in trading. Sometimes it can result in a big money loss, okay? Now, uh, some other orders are post-only and iceberg orders. Uh, so 
First, the post only order. We know that the limit orders, they can be triggered at market price and they can make you pay taker fees, okay? So what the post only orders do right here on Coin Go settings, there's the setting right here, post only. Uh, if it doesn't trigger in as a limit order, if, if it makes you pay those taker fees because it triggered at market price, it's canceled. Okay, so it kind of protects you from making a mistake with limit orders. And if, you're, if your computer is kind of lagging with the price, so let's say you're seeing the prices right here, but it drops really quickly and you can see on your computer screen and it goes right down here, but you place the limit order maybe somewhere right here, okay? And you place post only, then it will be canceled if that occurs to you, okay? And iceberg orders are something that some institutions use uh, because it divides the, the order into many smaller orders and it has visible and hidden parts that kind of get triggered as the price gets close to it. And it's mostly used by institutions when they're trying to place their orders without disrupting the market. Okay, because if you place like a bunch of lim limit orders at a given price, then everyone will see it in the order book, right? So yeah, if I place like 1 billion Bitcoin right here, everyone would see this red bar would be huge, right? And everyone would get scared. If you don't want to do that, then use those iceberg orders. It kind of splits it in visible and hidden parts, okay? And the, the last order type that I wanted to tell you about is the trailing stop order. Um, I don't think this one is on KuCoin specifically, and it's only available on Binance Futures, so it's not even available for spot. And this is a little bit of a more advanced type of order. It can be a little bit of uh, a harder thing to understand, but what it does is you set an activation price, right? And a callback rate. And once it hits the activation price, it kind of goes up, the, the stop price goes up when it goes up, but it, but it doesn't go down when the price goes down. So right here, this is a very clear, clear example. Let's say this is the callback rate, right? And this peak right here, you set it as activation price. It goes down, but you can see the stop is at the same price. But when it makes a new high right here, you can see it makes a new high, it goes up together with the new high. And again, this is kind of what would happen if you let it like play out fully. It goes up and when it starts going down, then this stays in the same place and it gets triggered right here, like right at the end of this trend. So many strategies, they have you using those trading stops. Now, the problem with this is first, um, it's just a given percent. You, can, you can't you can set it without bots, something like three commas or something like that to trail to an indicator, for example. So uh, for most strategies that let you that use trailing stops, it would be something like a moving average. You can't do that, uh, you can't do that directly on Binance futures. So um, let's say your strategy is the whole moving average or something like that. You can see it does not stay at a, a fixed distance of the price. Right, and you can do that. You cannot do that with the trailing stop order. Also, another kind of problem with this is that the the callback rate most exchanges limited to is five to ten percent. So sometimes you may be using a strategy that is kind of giving some leeway, you know, for maybe 15, 20 percent drops, and you're still in that position, especially if it's a more longer term trade, right? Uh, and you cannot do that with the trailing stop order. Okay, so uh, the last thing I want to tell you guys about is if you've got spare time, uh, I strongly recommend reading Ruben Villahermosa, the books that we have on the, the, the server, right? If you don't want to read through all the books, uh, he covers the topics we talked about uh, on this class on some topics on the second book. So let me just open the PDF right here. Um, let me see, uh, yeah, right here, open with Google Chrome, okay, okay. right here. So you guys can, just a second guys, sorry. Okay, sorry guys. Um, 
yeah, let me see, right here. You can see bid ask spread and liquidity, the 4.2 topic. He talks about it with a lot more detail. If I were to talk in as much detail as he talks about, and he talks about how the market moves and what kind of attitude we can expect from each type of order, uh, initiative and exhaustion and all of those things that supply demand. If I were to talk about all of the details he goes into right here, I'll take like just a lot of time, right? It will be a two hour class and everyone would go to sleep. So yeah, order book for volume analysis, the tape and yeah. So uh, one thing that's very nice to read is the order for problem, how to interpret order flow and stuff like that. Of course, this is not financial advice, anything like that, but it's good knowledge for TA nonetheless, okay? And for trading and how to position your trades, where to position them and etc. okay? It talks a lot about price divergence and cumulative delta, everything like that, okay? So yeah, today was a little bit of a shorter class. It's more of the basics, so we can all get on the same ground, you know, uh, build the ladders so we can all climb it together. And okay, so you got any questions, anything like that? Yeah, I actually was curious about the the order type where you put in a, a stop loss and a sell order at the same time. Uh, I was just wanting to know how to do that because I was wanting to try and do that and had the problem of, you know, you, you put them in separately and, and you can't do both, you know? Yeah. Uh, do, you, uh, do you use Binance? I use Binance. Binance USA. I'm not sure if they have, but if you search for like, if you look around for the OCO order, mm -hmm. let me see if I can just uh, kind of go through the website. I'm on KuCoin too. I don't know if yeah, that's KuCoin, in there. Yeah, KuCoin doesn't have it, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can use the TP stop loss automatic on the futures, but futures it's different, right? You're not, right. you don't need to lock up the the asset. Let me see if I can just uh, create an account uh, out of nowhere. I do KYC, so ah uh, yeah, you probably you uh, okay. Want to go so, that way? Yeah, okay. So yeah, if if you look around, at least on regular Binance. Uh, not us you have the oco order and it is kind of the 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 two orders in one let me see if google has an image of it uh yeah right here uh on the the binance website if you go to the regular website there's limit marker and here you can select multiple types and there's oco so uh the first price is the limit price the sell limit the higher you know the take profit and the lower limit is the stop the stop limit so the stop loss okay and here you select the amount and everything like that cool i think that might not be on on the u.s version ah uh, that's very annoying <laughs> yeah well um yeah that's about it uh any other questions mark uh, rodrigo Carlos. No. Nope. No, it was it was it was great. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah. So uh, from for the next classes, I'm thinking about starting risk management. Why? How to do it? And from the first class, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about strategies for risk management and how to do it, how to trail your stops. I'm always talking about that on the Crypto Moch channel. If you guys um, like kind of follow it and yeah, uh, the risk reward ratios and stuff like that. And the class after death, I think I'm going to go into the mathematics of risk management. Uh, like how much, so let's say I'm using like 20% of my account on each trade. So how, how much is the percentage uh, chance of me getting completely wrecked, like losing it all? How do we calculate that, the mess behind that? And we might talk a little bit about normal distributions and stuff like that. It's going to be a fun ride, I think. Okay. So, yeah, I think today was nice. A very nice introductory class. 
and I see you guys next week. Okay. All right. Thank is you. it is it every Tuesday? Um, I just joined actually. Literally oh, to sorry. the website right now. Oh, sorry, dude. Yeah. Uh, uh, the class started about forty minutes ago, I think. No, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I just uh, literally registered on the um, website. Uh, and I just found that there was an ongoing session right now. I just took ah, it. I got the cool. question in. Yeah. Cool. So, so um, um, the recording will be available on the, the videos part. We always record all of our meetings. And, uh, and they're I'm all gonna, there? Yeah, all of them since the beginning when I thought a bit about blockchain basics. My mm -hmm. microphone quality was a little bit worse because I didn't have a good mic at the time. Now I have one. So right. kind of go through it. I think it's the first two or three classes, but it gets better. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. The next one is it when? When is it? The next. It's one? Tuesday at like forty minutes ago. You know, right. every Tuesday. Is it, is at, it every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Yeah. All right. Perfect. I'll be here. Okay. We also have like uh, on um, Thursdays and Sundays too. Cool. So where are you from, Marcelo? I'm from Brazil. Brazil. Okay. I'm from uh, Puerto Rico. Ah, uh, cool. Cool. There you go. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm going to stop the recording.